Welcome back. This is the final video of section 5.3, and we've been building up to the statement, to the theorem that we're, going, we're about to see, theorem 5.3.5, which tells us that if a is row equivalent to i, then a is invertible. And this statement will actually give us a method to find the inverse matrix, and we'll see that in a second. But first, let's prove the statement, and it's a pretty straightforward proof uh, using everything we've just seen in the last couple of videos, because if a is row equivalent to i, then we know that there exists a sequence of elementary row operations, a sequence of EROs, such that that sequence will turn A into I, right? That's what row equivalence means. It means there's a sequence of, let's say, O1 all the way to OK that will turn A into I. And we've also seen that that means um, that there's a sequence of elementary matrices, a sequence of elementary matrices that correspond to those elementary row operations. And the way we look at it is E1, let's multiply E1 by A, so it'll give us the next matrix and so forth until EK, and that gives us I, right? So we've seen, we, we understand how this works now that doing this sequence Elementary row operations on A in order to get I is the same thing as left multiplying by this sequence of elementary matrices, right? But if you look at what we just wrote, uh, you'll recognize right away that this is a product of elementary matrices. So we can call it P, but we can also call it A inverse, right? Since P times A, right, P is an invertible matrix, and P times A equals I, well then by definition, this matrix is A inverse. And that's the entire proof. Right, um, the matrix A is invertible because we started with a matrix that was row equal into I, and we're able to show that the matrix is invertible. And two little remarks that are very important. The first one is that we're going to prove a little bit later that the converse of the statement is also true. You know, the statement says A is row equal into I means that A is invertible. Well, the converse of that will also be true, whereas that is that if A is invertible, then A is row equal into I. Okay, we'll see that a little bit later. But even more important, the second remark says that the above theorem gives us a procedure to find A inverse, right? And why is that? Well, we just remarked that EK all the way to E1, that product we just said is equal to A inverse. In other words, A inverse equals EK times EK minus 1 all the way to E1. But if I flip that, that statement around, that's the same as saying that EK all the way to E1 is equal to A inverse. You notice I inserted an I here, but that doesn't change anything, right? I'm allowed to multiply by I. And so if you look at the statement now, you notice that it, it's saying that if you left multiply I by E1 all the way to EK, which is the same thing as applying the elementary row operations O1 to OK, well, the result will be A inverse. And so you notice that this sequence, so let me attract your attention to this. Where did this sequence come from? Well, this sequence, uh, O1 to OK was the sequence that turned A into I. Well, what we're saying here is that that same sequence of elementary row operations turns I into A inverse, right? And that's what we're saying here in the takeaway is that the same sequence of elementary row operations that turns A into I will turn I into A inverse, okay? In other words, just to reinforce the idea, I'll write it like this. If A becomes I through a sequence of elementary row operations, so I'll say O1 all the way to okay well then we have the same thing with that same sequence o1 that same sequence will turn i into a inverse that makes sense so these two sequences of elementary row operations are the same and this is what we're going to use in the next section to develop a method to find the inverse of any matrix any square matrix if that inverse exists and so we'll end section 5.